right, welcome back guys. So I'm Tony, Tone Body Fitness here. I've got Caitlin. Caitlin as well. Uh, so this is our third series now, third uh, video for the Gulf Conditioning Series. And first one being Caitlin's video of the mobility, flexibility, building up all that kind of uh, aspect in your body to get as flexible as possible. So it's saved in our YouTube channel, so you can check that out. The second video was more of the strength-based exercise. So went over the eight top exercises that you can include into your workout program, either at home or at the gym, whatever you have access to. And then today is gonna be kind of putting it all together. And then actually when we get out onto the golf course, what are some aspects you can do? So Caitlin, as the professional golfer she is, uh, way better than I am, she's gonna kind of take you through what uh, a day in the life of a golfer will look like from the start of it all the way up until her first uh, tee shot from the tee box. So she'll kind of go through that, that aspect as well. Great. All right, so get excited, sit back, get your popcorn ready, <laughs> enjoy the show today. Um, so the, the, the first thing I wanted to go over is just kind of the, the difference between training. So we were doing off season stuff with the, the mobility and the flexibility stuff, and now we're going to in season and, and what the difference for your training regimen, what, what does that mean? And now that we're going in in season, now depending upon where you live, I mean, obviously I know a lot of us are from Wisconsin, but if you're somewhere where you can golf year round, um, this may not pertain to you as much, but here in Wisconsin, we have some months where you can't golf all the time because there's you know five feet of snow on the ground. So now that we're getting into in season, what happens is resistance training with the heavier weights tends to drop for frequency. So maybe you're doing it three to four times per week, um, now, if you're a really avid golfer where you're golfing four or five times a week, you can drop that resistance training down to two, three times a week and start increasing the recovery aspect to help your body feel good. So the, the stretches that we've gone through, any yoga, so uh, Caitlin will hit on it a little bit as well, but we have, we have 45 and 60 minute yoga classes, but even like a quick 10, 15 minute yoga class right after golf, maybe before you go to bed, can help with that recovery aspect. So that's all the in-season type conditioning. So a little less of the heaviest weight stuff, a little more of the recovery, um, working with the bands, keeping the core nice and strong. And I'll give you some exercises today too that you can do in-season that are not gonna get you where you can't walk for like a week. That's not the goal of in-season training. That's more of the stuff you wanna do off-season. Build up your strength, build up your power, kind of the stuff we were hitting on before where in the off-season you can get your body as strong as possible. It doesn't have to be golf-specific movements. Um, I mean, now a lot of golfers are huge into the fitness aspect where it's not all just taking a cable and rotating across your body. There's a lot of movements for squats, deadlifts, chest press, rows, pull-ups, just strengthening the body overall. So that would be all the off-season stuff. So kind of makes sense? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So um, the first thing I want to tap into then is just some exercises that you want to incorporate into your actual routine. So. Uh, an area of your body that you want to keep strong year round are your legs, all right? Your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your calves. These are your prime movers of your body, and they're also very effective if you can keep them working when you're golfing. So, Caitlin's going to tell you kind of on a day of golfing aspect how to like prime the glutes, get your legs ready to be able to utilize them for golf. I'm going to show you some things that you guys can do in season to make sure you're keeping your legs strong. Now, everybody knows what squats are. Squats are very essential to keeping your legs uh, nice and strong because the compound movement, meaning it's working from multiple joints. Hips are bending, knees are bending, ankles are bending. So a couple different types of squats to help you stay nice and strong, even just body weight squats. So if you're pretty new to working out, arms out in front, just going right into full squats, making sure the knees don't go all the way over your toes. So push your hips backwards, coming all the way down, all the way straight back up, just working on the squats, build that stability. Once you feel that you're like, you know what, squats are, aren't as much of a challenge for me, now you can incorporate some other aspects, some other training apparatuses, uh, like a, a BOSU, and create an unstable environment. If you have one of these, or something that's unstable, now, <clears throat> when you're doing a squat, you're on an unstable surface. So same move you're just doing, but now it works all those small, so first time you're doing it, your legs might shake around a little bit on here, what, what happens is it creates an unstable environment. So 
If you're like me and sometimes you're playing in the sand when you're golfing, it's good to keep, you know, sand is an unstable environment. You want to keep your legs strong while they're on unstable apparatuses. So when you are on unstable surfaces, your legs are, you know, ground into the floor when you're taking a golf swing. So use stuff like a BOSU. You can do weighted squats. <clears throat> so just taking a weight at your chest, another way to keep the legs strong. So now you perfected the squat form, taking any weight. This is a dumbbell we got here. This is about a hundred pound dumbbell I'm using. Going all the way down, all the way straight back up here for the squats. Joking, it's just a 15 pounder. So here's going, <laughs> you're, you're impressed there for a while. So you're going all the way down. Now you're just getting a little bit more muscle breakdown. But once again, in season, don't feel you have to go super heavy. Just keep those muscles strong and primed to be able to take it over to the golf course um, to help you be more effective and efficient when you're actually doing your golf swing. Um, other components too, if you really struggle with balance, if balance is a really big obstacle for you, doing some single leg stuff would be key because usually with balance, one side is a little more stable than the other. So just putting one leg out, maybe go down to like a half squat and then straight back up or a full squat. Maybe you're close enough to a wall we can just kind of slide down a wall and back up to give you a little bit of balance, doing about 10, 12 on each side to really focus on any strength discrepancies from side to side. So biggest thing in season, if you can keep squats going in your entire legs to keep them strong, it's gonna be a great way to keep your body nice and strong. Another common area to keep strong in the body is the backside of the shoulders and the core. Now when we're swinging, <clears throat> You know, the backside of the shoulders, rotator cuffs take a lot of force, a lot of impact, especially if you're taking divots out. So you wanna keep those strong. The core is obviously one of your prime movers when, when you're doing a swing. So a move that you guys can do is a bent position wide. Now this can be done daily. If you have any shoulder injuries, this is a great way to take pressure off of the front side of the shoulder from all the typing, texting, whatever you're doing in front of you. You can go into a bent position, back is flat, arms come underneath your chest. To start, it would probably not go with weights, but eventually you can start pulling on the small dumbbells. You're gonna make a Y with your body. So you're right here making a Y with your body. Come up as high as you can. Pause for a second, slow on the way down. You do about 15 of these. Once you start feeling like that's pretty easy, you can hold two, three, four pound weights. The highest you'd probably ever go with that is probably a five pound weight because the key is going slow and steady and pausing, not kind of just swing through. This is doing absolutely nothing for your shoulders. When you come up, pause, hold, iso hold. Now the core is activated, back of the shoulders are activated. If you slowly come back down, really helps strengthen the back of the shoulder. So not a, not a huge workout presentation I wanted to give to you guys, but more so keep the legs strong in season, keep the back of the shoulder and core strong in season, and then we can focus on the mobility and flexibility aspects as we keep going. Um, one other quick thing I do want to share with you. Now I know a lot of people really try and focus on that inside, inside out swing. Very easy concept to get, harder to actually um, imply that into your actual golf game. So a tip that I was taught a while back that actually helps me with this is if you have a towel at home, It's a nice, easy drill you can do in home. You can even do this at the golf course. I've seen a lot of people do it at driving ranges. Just take any towel, got my handy dandy Packer towel here, put it across your chest, kind of tuck your arms in so it's, it's locked by your side, all right? Just like you would in a golf swing. So you don't have to have your arms like all the way in front of your chest like this. So just go to a natural golf swing, but keep that towel tucked underneath your arm, especially if you're right-handed, you're inside right. If you're left-handed, keep your inside left elbow tuck. And what you're gonna do here is keeping in your golf position, your golf stance, you're gonna go through like a half range of motion swing but without letting that towel fall, okay? So you're coming all the way back, right arm is tucked into the side of your body and swinging through, do that a couple times and eventually you can take a full swing and that towel will fall but at least through that contact point you're, you're keeping that right elbow in. A lot of people have a tendency to sway it out, that toe will fall, you're coming over the top of the golf club, and that's sometimes where you slice across the ball and either miss it or send that big slice uh, with your irons or driver. So this can be done with any club. I have a four iron here that I'm using. 
So once again, all you're doing is you're tucking that toe underneath your armpits, hold it in tight, nice good posture. Just a couple times at the driving range, come all the way back, forward, get, get comfortable with that motion. So you're able to keep that right arm. In. And what you wanna focus on is, is internally feeling that right arm tucked to your body. And then naturally, so one thing I don't like doing is thinking too much of the T-box. I don't want 17 things going through my head. So if you have just have one thing where you naturally feel like that right arm is tucked, so when you actually take a swing, you're actually like, you're, you're not focusing on it, but it just naturally does it because you, you felt that towel there. So eventually when you're ready to take that swing, that towel will fall, but you're trying to hold it as long as you can. Oops, I'll break our ground there. Uh, so you're just keeping that elbow tucked in nice and tight. So is that that's something you uh, utilize in your game there, Dave? Sorry? Is that something that you utilize in your uh, training? You know, I have not utilize the towel. That sounds like a great idea. I'm sure that'll work pretty good. Just make sure you got somewhere where you have high ceilings. You don't take out any lights. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think I'll do it outside. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Uh, so those are kind of the strength training components. Um, the next thing I want to hit on real briefly is just the mobility and flexibility of the body. So if you have a foam roller at home, you can utilize uh, <coughs> This, and what I'm gonna do is just kind of take you through a couple of different movement patterns, areas that get pretty tight. So when people golf, usually what gets stiff, low back, legs a little bit, and shoulders, but a lot, a lot of low back and like hips, especially if you're walking. Now, I know some places have carts, some places are walking right now in Wisconsin, the Milwaukee area, if you're walking, sometimes those hips can get stiff. So if you have one of these foam rollers, this is like doing a deep tissue massage on yourself and you can kind of find those tight spots of what will give you pain. So what I have us do first is the glutes. If you sit on this foam roller, a great way to get the glutes is whatever side you're gonna do. So I'm gonna do my left side here, take that left leg, figure four over the top of your right, and just kind of shift all the way up and down. Get that whole glute section uh, stretched out. If you find a spot that's tender, usually it's gonna be on the outside where that glute medius is. Now, if you're not a kinesiology major, major, you might not know where their glute medius is, but it's right in the outside of the hip. You're gonna roll on it up and down and be like, ah, that's kind of a stiff and tight, perfect spot to go up and down and keep some pressure onto it. And I would say a good 60 to 90 seconds on each side. So switch it up to the other side, same exact thing. You can do your right side, flip over your right leg, just rolling all the way up and down, get that whole glute section in there. And this kind of just helps loosen up the hips. It also takes pressure off your low back because sometimes if your glutes get stiff from all the walking and swinging of a club, uh, it can kind of tense up that low back as well. Uh, another area that is not fun at all to stretch, but very impactful is the IT band. IT band runs from the side of your knee all the way up like the seam of your pants where it would be, but it's actually on your body, all the way up the side of your leg up until your TFL, so the top of your hip flexor in the side. So you lay on the side, now, if you've never tried this before, put your top leg like this for a little bit of support because it is not gonna, it's gonna be painful. It's kind of painful at first. You're just gonna roll all the way up and down that full side of your leg. If you feel more comfortable with that, you can put both legs on there and that feels a little bit more painful. But if you can loosen up that IT band, it allows you to take more pressure off, your, off of your knee as you're doing different movement patterns throughout the day. Um, and then another one I wanted to take you through is just the back as well. So the back tends to stiffen up, get tight. So a great one, it's kind of like going to a chiropractor, but you're doing it yourself once again. So you just put it in your back. And when you're doing this, uh, one tip you wanna do is make sure you're on a hard ground. So don't do this on carpet. Don't do this on like a pad. Make sure the foam roller is on hard ground so it's pushing back into your body so you're getting that resistance. What I like doing here is just doing like a little crunch up and rolling all the way up and down your spine so you're kind of massaging out all those small muscles along the spine that tend to get tight when you're out golfing, you know, 18, uh, nine or 18 rounds of golf. So all the way up and down, feels great. Might get a couple of cracks in there, which feel really good. The next thing, if you already have this here, is gonna be spinal extension and flexion. So now that everything's gone virtual, even before that, this is the position of our body a lot. We're in a C shape. A lot of stress on our back, a lot of stress in that mid torso, a lot of stress in the shoulders. So people tend to lose 
the position of spinal extension. Okay, so everybody's fixed in this spinal flexion position. It puts a lot of pressure on your lumbar discs. So if you do a sport where there's heavy, fast rotation, you're more likely to have slip disc, little low back pain, because your, your body's so pushed into this spinal flexion position. So a nice thing to do is keep your butt on the ground, lay on top of that foam roller, and then just work as much spinal extension as far down as you can, up into a spinal flexion. You don't have to do a really heavy crunch. You're not really trying to go this way too high. It's more about letting gravity pull you down to get as much back range of motion as you can. Holding it for a few rounds of breath and slowly coming up there. So another way to, and you can move that around so you can go up a little higher, try it again. Obviously the, the lower you go with that foam roller, the harder it's gonna be because more of your body is hanging off that foam roller. So I would start with it up at the top. As you feel more comfortable, you can gradually start moving it more and more down closer to your hips. And then the last one I want to go for, I do this a lot with my golfing clients. It's called the 90-90 thoracic mobility. So your, your top leg is on top of the foam roller, holding it down to the ground. Arms are in front of you here. You can take a big deep breath in. And as you exhale, you come all the way back behind you to build that thoracic mobility. So your knee's gonna to wanna to pop up. That's why that foam roller's there. Keep your knee pressed down into that foam roller while your opposite hand, this one, goes all the way across your back. And this is one that if you're tight, you're gonna have a tendency to hold your breath. Try and breathe through it. So maybe at first you're here, and you take an exhale and you get down here, and you gradually get down a little further without bouncing. Bouncing is a good way to hurt yourself. Nice and slow stretching. He even uses opposite hand, give you a little assistance here in that front knee, coming all the way down to the ground. And make sure to do that on both sides to keep your body nice and symmetrical. So these are a lot of uh, in-season ways to strengthen your body first and then um, work on the flexibility. Kind of like, like, like our uh, presentation says, putting it all together or wrapping it all together. Uh, you can go back to our previous uh, YouTube channel segments where the first full session was Caitlin taking you through a full 30-ish minute uh, flexibility component. And then our previous one, I went through a bunch of uh, strength training exercises here for you. So um, the next thing I wanna get to is just kind of like a day in the life of a golfer, what you're going through for each component. So Caitlin's gonna kind of describe and talk to you about what her day looks like before she actually gets up to the tee box. So every step getting up to that tee box and why she's doing it so you guys understand um, what it takes to be a golfer. All right, thanks, Tony. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I'm teeing off early in the morning, so that takes a lot of discipline to get to bed early the night before. Never underestimate the power of a great night's sleep, first and foremost. Um, and then it takes waking up even earlier than that tea time to prepare. So, um, you know, it, it's all the components, putting it all together. We haven't talked a lot about nutrition to this point, but, you know, making sure that you have... Um, a substantial breakfast, something that's not going to weigh you down, not going to be too heavy, but it's going to provide you with some energy because um, it's a long day out there on the course. You know, even if you're just playing nine holes, that's a good two, two and a half hours plus all the prep to get there. So making sure I have enough time to get up in the morning, um, prepare a nice breakfast, and then um, prepare my body for the, the round as well. So um, I'm a, an average runner, so generally I will get up and run for a round of golf. I realize that's not a lot of people's MO, but I um, do like to warm up my body because when I play, I tend to walk more than ride in the, the cart. So I don't wanna be the first um, on the first tee just starting to walk and move my body for the first time of the day. So I'll generally do a nice walk to warm up in the morning, uh, maybe just around the neighborhood um, or um, on the treadmill or maybe hop on an exercise bike for 10 to 15 minutes or just like run a mile or something like that. And to, before I do that even, I will um, fire up my glutes. So I'll do some hip bridges so generally, laying down here, bringing in the heels close to the glutes, arms pressed down, my sides palms into the mat, back flat on the mat, and then the lift comes from the hips. Squeeze in the glutes at the top here, and trying to keep the knees apart, not letting them cave in, but just keeping the knees hip, dis hip with distance apart. And I will do, um, 
anywhere from you know 20 to 100 of these actually to just laying there, maybe watching the news, planning out my shots, visualizing my golf game, um, but really firing up these glutes. That's something that is really important for the golf game and um, you know kind of the basis of your whole swing when you think about it. Um, and so you, and that's something that a lot of people don't do. So the, having the glutes activated will help stabilize the entire lower body when you're out there on the course. So that is something I'll do. And then once I get to the course, I will also do, um, work on warming up the spine uh, properly. So the spine is where all the motion of the body and the swing, so important to the swing. Um, and the spine moves in six directions. If you take my yoga class here, you'll probably get sick of hearing me say that but the spine moves front, back, side to side, and then there's that rotation as well. So I always try in all my yoga classes and then in my personal warm-up routine to warm up that spine in all six directions. So um, some simple things that I can do once I get to the course, or even on the first tee, I'll take a club, put it behind me, and I can do some simple rotations with it, just kind of warming up swing has a lot of that, that rotational flexibility, just kind of mimicking a swing, have that shoulder tilt down a little bit. So that's getting that rotation, and then I might dip side to side, warming up the side of the spine, and then well, the one that Tony showed you on the foam roller is really good for that back extension, but even just pushing the hands of the lower back, kind of leaning back gently, supporting the spine here in this motion. And then I love doing um, forward folds. So bending from the hips and just coming down, slowly letting the spine unravel and holding the head heavy here. And you can either you know, let your hands fall to the earth, keeping a micro bend in the knees, not locking up those knees, being careful with those knees. Um, or holding onto opposite elbows to kind of just pull you down further. Um, I like to do that. And then even taking like a wide leg forward fold, walking the legs out further, stretching out the hamstrings and the backs of the legs to prepare you and to also warm up that spine um, for your round of golf. Um, if you're playing with a cart and you've got maybe the, a bench or the clubhouse uh, wall nearby, you can also stretch out the back of the legs. I like to extend the calves like this way, pressing into it. And then some dynamic stretches as well. Um, I, can, I would do this at home maybe before my run or again when I get to the course, but just kind of some leg swings. And then also some hip openers. So taking, I'll show you from the front and then start supported against the wall, but taking the knee up, out, and around. Just opening up those hips. So those hips are going to get stiff, especially if you're walking, and the hips are such an important part of your turn in that golf swing that you want to make sure that those are pliable and warmed up too. So using a wall or a golf cart for support hip circles, opening up the gate there. You can also go the opposite direction as well. You can hear my hip popping there. Needed a little bit of, of those hip circles. So that's what I'll do before the first tee. Also taking some practice swings. So you're not only just practicing and refining the technical aspect of your swing, but you're getting your body warmed up for that motion. Um, and then going from there and hoping you have a good day on the course. And um, as Tony mentioned, some of the foam rolling stuff is really important for recovery. Um, so taking the time to do that after the round as well um, will keep you in top shape for your game. Any questions so far? No, that's good so far. Great. Um, other things that we wanted to touch on, you know, is, is proper nutrition um, during that during your round. You know, again, I mentioned eating something um, to keep you sustained, a good a good breakfast or a good lunch, depending on when you're going out there to play. Uh, but bringing a snack along with you, something healthy that's going to be sustained energy, 
um, making sure that you stay hydrated on the course. Tony and I were just talking, a lot of people like to enjoy alcoholic beverages while they play. There's nothing wrong with that if you're in an outing, you're having fun with friends. But remembering that you are out there and you are performing a physical activity, it'll get warm out there in the summer. Um, so making sure that you replace those fluids and alcohol is dehydrating your system. So making sure you're staying hydrated, drinking plenty of water, getting your electrolytes, um, checking in with us, maybe a sports drink, Powerade, a Gatorade, uh, Pedialyte, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, Caitlin was saying, and uh, with, with alcohol being a big part of the like, golfing aspect, um, and Caitlin kind of touched on it a little bit, just the, the recovery piece. So. You know, having a few drinks at the golf course is pretty, uh, a lot of people do that, especially in golf outings. Um, if you are doing that, just make sure that when you get home, you are getting proper hydration. Maybe you're using some electrolyte tablets. Maybe you have some uh, a fresh smoothie. So in that next day, your body recovers a little quicker. Because when your body is dehydrated, that is when you're more susceptible to tearing, straining, pulling some type of muscle or ailment and if you are golfing two days in a row the last thing you want is to be going into a golf game sore like a, a pulled back muscle which is pretty common uh, for golfers that are playing like a full weekend of golf or if you take a weekend trip with your buddy somewhere up north or down south and you know keep yourself hydrated the more hydrated muscles are the more willing they're able to work with you on your everyday golf swing and tasks so that's the biggest thing, nutrition-wise, recovery-wise. Um, another big thing that we wanted to touch on is, I, I touched on a little bit in the beginning, and Caitlin touched on it in our first session, is just how important mobility and yoga is in your in your overall routine. So we we have multiple yoga classes throughout the week. Caitlin is also an instructor, so not only is she an excellent golfer, she also instructs the yoga aspect. So if you are a golfer that is looking into getting into yoga as well, you have a great option if you're Caitlin who also understands the body and what it takes to perform the activities of golf before, during, after, plus she's got the knowledge of being an amazing yoga instructor so you got all, all in one fit here. Um, but just a great way to help your body feel more flexible because um, one thing that we preach to a lot of our golfing clients are, is like, you know, you can be extremely powerful, but if you can change your shoulder to hip dissociation, so you're going here and now, like after a summer, you're able to get back this much further, you don't have to have any extra club head speed, but just that extra rotation might add an extra 20 to 30 yards of distance, just because you have just more range of motion of that club head coming around without any added speed. Now, with extra range of motion, you're able to add increased speed because the club head's traveling further. So. It's just a, a, a lot better way to help feel better in that in-season stuff now. Now that kind of like our presentation is putting it all together, we're in season. This is where your body can definitely capitalize on improving yoga. Even if you've never done it in the past, don't be intimidated by it. It's definitely something that can help you increase all the areas that your body could be feeling tight from. So reach out to us. Let us know. You can reach us uh, phone. You can reach us by email. Uh, all the stuff will be uh, linked in underneath our, our video here so you can find the direct contact for us. You can also find our website, tonebodyfit.com. All the trainers are on there. Caitlin's mugshot's on there as well. You can read all about her and her background um, and you know, kind of get, get the gist of like, what should I do? And reach out to us. If you're a golfer, just starting, intermediate, advanced, we got some for all levels of golfers and we can start all different levels. So we have all different levels of golfers here already. So you're kind of in you know, a, a boat that could be with some other, other like-minded individuals. So we uh, appreciate you guys kind of tuning in for these uh, golf series. This will be the last one of our uh, off-season series. So hopefully next uh, winter we'll, we'll dive back into some in-season stuff and um, Virtual, we'll probably offer that, but we'll probably do some more in-person stuff as well. So if you're in the area and you want to have, you know, Caitlin and myself come do a seminar at your facility, let us know. We're more than willing to come talk to uh, anybody in the community about improving your golf fitness, overall fitness, mobility, flexibility, nutrition, everything that helps keep our Milwaukee community nice and safe and healthy and having fun golfing. So. Thank you guys so much for tuning in all off-season. It's been fun getting to know you. I'm and I hope to see you guys out on the course and here in studio at a class hopefully soon.
Absolutely. So if any of you guys do want to uh, take us out for a round of golf as well, feel free to call us up and invite us. We're, we're always down to uh, golf with you guys. Absolutely. So. Thanks again. Bye. All right.